Good morning. It's Friday, September 13th, about 6 a.m. Central Time. Doing the video in my backyard here. I do live on the Gulf of Mexico. We got a whole ton of people staying in our house, and I don't want to wake them up yelling about precious metals at 6 a.m. So looking at the metals here, and the hurricane was about 80 miles west of me, so we narrowly dodged another one. Now looking at hurricane action, the scores on the board, we do have precious metals. Palladium futures up 17% on the week. Platinum futures up 8%. Silver futures up 7%, and gold Gold futures up 2%. So great performance in these metals across the board. Now looking at the overnight price action, you do have December gold, $25.95 up $14. The high was $26.01. We'll see if that can continue to move higher. December silver up 22 cents at 30.32. December copper unchanged at 419. Little concerned about the price action in copper and its correlation to the silver market. I'll tell you why. Just from a basic technical standpoint, we're running up to the 50 and 200 day moving average. The 50 day moving average has been sloping lower on the copper market and looks like if it does have a negative daily close, we could see the 50 day cross below the 200 day. That's called the death cross on the charts. Remember the opposite when you get the 50 day moving average crossing above the 200 day moving average, that's called the golden cross and that's often a bullish sign of prices to come. Now why is copper lagging so bad? Remember the biggest consumer of copper is China. And without China is the question Will silver continue to rally because of their correlation? They're about 67% correlated. And remember, China consumes much of the silver that's out there. They create it into end products and they export those end products globally. A lot of those products are also consumer discretionary products. And if you're coming into recessionary type times, people are going to curb their, their, their their costs and their buying of different consumer discretionary items. So I'm a little bit skeptical at this point in time. Now, where does silver need to go and where does it need to close in order for me to be more bullish on the silver market at the moment? And don't crucify me. I want silver to go to the 35, 40, 45, and $50, just like everybody else. We want to see a close on the silver market above $30.31. That takes it back to a bullish trend. Your critical level of support that we don't want to see it cross below is going to be about 29.54. That's going to be your 50 day moving average. We break below that. Remember old resistance is now new support. So $29 is going to be your next level of support. And then we go into that messy consolidation phase between 28 and 29. Now where could silver go? Realistically, if we could break over 30.54, we could run back up to 32.50. I think there's just kind of a dead zone of air where prices could move higher up into that level. Something you do want to do is do yourself a favor. Print out a chart of the silver market. Go back about one year and look at the performance. You'll see that the May high, you'll also see the July high and the August high, they've all been lower highs. That's the reason why I'm a little bit concerned about that upward price momentum. I want to see us clear some of these hurdles to really give me the confidence that we're going to see a much more sustainable move to the upside. Now, something on a positive note is if you look when we bounced off that 200 day moving average, that next sell off where we got down to about $28, that was a higher low. So we've got lower highs on a chart and we've got higher lows on a chart, which means we're coming into this type of pennant pattern, which could send prices breaking out one way or the other. So a couple other things that I'm looking at, we do have that Fed meeting next week. It's about a 50-50 shot that the Fed cuts 50 basis points, which I'm a little surprised at. If you look at across the pond at the European Union, they did cut 25 basis points here yesterday. They're at about 3.5%. They've had two interest rate cuts where we've had none. So perhaps does the Fed need to play catch up and cut 50 basis points? Maybe that's what people are thinking. Now, something that the European Union did, and you do need to be aware of, is that they did come out and they said that they're going to be data dependent, which is what set the euro currency up, which is what brought the dollar index down, is what, and is what helped gold prices go up here yesterday. So if Jerome Powell throws us for a curveball and says, hey, we're gonna cut this 25 basis points, but we're gonna be data dependent. That's where the rug gets pulled out on a lot of these precious metals. So you heard your warning here, and you know, like a hurricane, 
you're gonna get about a five-day warning when it's gonna come. I'm giving you that five-day warning that there is the possibility of that with the Federal Reserve and with Jerome Powell because of the fact we've seen some of this inflation data, CPI on Wednesday, was a little bit hotter than expected here, especially that core CPI. So just keep a note on that as well. Not trying to be Debbie Downer, not trying to pour any water on anyone's, uh, you know, you know, mess with them at all. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So you got any questions, give me a call 312-858-7303. Remember, futures and option trading involves risk of loss may not be suitable to all investors. Good luck, good trading.